Hello, thank you for joining me today for Give Him 15. The title of today's post is Reader of the Altar, Ask for the Fire. Hebrew is an amazing language. Though I'm no expert regarding it, I simply know how to use various tools. I do have a great appreciation for its brilliance. As I have said at times, it is a pictorial language. Letters represent pictures which are combined to present concepts. Meanings are understood in part based on the context of the letters or pictures use. This obviously means a Hebrew word can represent numerous things. For example, Passover, leap, skip, lame, halt, and limp are all the same word in Hebrew, pasak. The picture, obviously, is the up and down, side to side halting movement, Passover, Passover. Halt, limp. Those that just read the post and don't see me doing this are missing out. Interestingly, though seldom used as such, it is also a word for dance. Again, this is because of the movement, the letters, picture. Passover is a joyous celebration commemorating Israel's exodus from Egypt when God just judged the Egyptians with the death angel but passed over the Israelites. The exodus was their deliverance from slavery and oppression. This, of course, was a picture of Christ, our Passover lamb whose blood delivers us from spiritual death and bondage. After Israel's deliverance, they celebrated at the Red Sea with timbrels, singing, and dancing. Though dancing in this passage is a different Hebrew word, it nonetheless was a picture of the great joy of Passover. In 1 Kings 18, 21, Elijah asked the Israelites how long they would halt between opinions. Pasach. How long were you Pasach between opinions? Other translations use various other words here. Hesitate, waver, limp, hobble, and more. Elijah is obviously confronting their inability to decide between serving Yahweh or Baal. So they're back and forth and wavering. They're back and forth double-mindedness. But by using Pasach, the play on words cannot be missed. You could be, he was saying, and should be dancing the dance of Passover, Pasach, celebrating the deliverance and freedom given to you by Yahweh. Instead, you are lamping the lamp, Pasach, of Baal, the dance of Passover, or the lamp of Baal. What a picture. Same word. Israel had gone from a dance to a limp, from freedom to bondage, from God to demons. They had moved from the provision of God to the oppression of Ahab and Jezebel. The Psalms speak of God turning our mourning into dancing. They had allowed Baal to turn their dancing into mourning. That's M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Baal worship, or yielding to any other demonic influence, often begins with dancing. Satan paints a picture of sin as fun, freedom, joy. But the temporary pleasure always ends in mourning, and the dance becomes a limp. The same word for Israel's limp, Pasach, by the way, is used for the leaping and dancing of the Baal worshippers trying to persuade this spirit to respond to them. America once danced the dance of Passover, celebrating the goodness of 
God and salvation of the Passover lamb, Jesus. We rejoiced in our prosperity, freedom, wholeness, and partnership with Yahweh. We were the envy of the world, a light in the darkness, rescuers. Who in their right mind now questions the fact that we are lame, limping around the altar of our new God, pleading for him to answer by fire to prove that he's everything we thought he was, like the Laodicean church of Revelation. We still pretend to be rich, wealthy, and have no need of anything, and won't admit that we are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. We sacrifice our homes, children, health, and wealth to this false god, hoping that he'll give us back our dance. We elect liars and fools to government. Ahabs and Jezebels who worship this God, hoping they can give us back our dance. But our limp becomes more pronounced. Our leaders stumble off of platforms while the world laughs and mocks our downfall. What is the solution for this crippling demise? It's the same today as it was in Elijah's day. We must reject the worship of this false god and return to the god of Passover. Like the church at Laodicea, we must stop our denial and do as they were told. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire, the Lord said, so that you may become rich, and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness not be revealed. And I said, to apply to your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Therefore be zealous and repent. A good time to begin doing so would be Sunday mornings. Limping into powerless gatherings with broken down altars, acting as though everything is fine, while Baal steals our children and rules our nation, is tolerating evil Jezebel. When Elijah asked, asked Israel how long they would waver between opinions or limp between opinions, they were silent, just as many in the church today. Elijah rebuilt the altar and asked for fire. What would happen if thousands of pastors around our nation rebuilt the altars of intercession in what Jesus said should be houses of prayer? What would happen if desperate cries for the fire of revival and its cleansing power were issued from the pulpits and pews of America? We know the answer to this. The God who answered Elijah by fire would answer our cries as well. The rain would fall. Baal's strongholds would be torn down and our land would once again dance the dance of the Passover lamb. Now, for some good news. Though the majority in Israel did not join Elijah in his prayer that day, God nevertheless answered and sent the fire. He didn't require a majority. And Elijah's are being raised up in our day. A remnant is joining them. And God will respond to their repentance and prayers. They are rebuilding the altar. They are asking for the fire. And the fire will fall. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Christ, our Passover lamb. We thank you for the many benefits you've given our nation and the blessings that came 
from serving and partnering with you. We have danced with you, rejoicing in our salvation, freedoms, abundant blessings. No nation has been blessed with the abundance of this land. and It has all been because of our loving and serving you. We are proof that blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord. And yet, this once dancing nation now walks with a terrible limp, the limp of Baal. We are the Laodicean church, wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. If not for the supernatural healing you can provide, we would never dance again. But you also said to this church, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him. Though not a majority, many are hearing this knock, opening the door through repentance, repairing prayer's altar, and asking you to enter with your fire. And we believe you will do as you said. We dare to ask that the latter glory be greater than the former. We do. We ask that this next dance be the greatest dance in America's history. We ask that the God of Baal be overwhelmed by you, the true and living God, just as he was at the Red Sea and on Mount Carmel. We declare that our mourning will be turned into dancing again. That we will put off our sackcloth and be wrapped in the garments of gladness. We and our children will once again sing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God the Almighty. Righteous and true are your ways, King of the nations? Who will not fear you, Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. For all the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. And our decree. We declare that the fire of God will fall on America again. Our limp will be healed and we will dance like David as the ark of his presence returns. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. Have a good weekend. Don't forget to pray, especially Sunday morning. And I'll see you Monday.